Welcome back to this training series about how to mix live music. In this video, we'll talk about how to choose the right mixing console for your work and what tools and accessories you should always take to work. The first thing to consider is, will all the other necessary equipment connect to the console? Are there enough microphone inputs? Inputs for instruments at line level? Stereo inputs for playback machines? Are there enough outputs for all the amplifiers and powered speakers? Enough auxes for sending sound to the musicians? Maybe a recording output? And how do you know how many auxes is enough? Well, ideally, there should be one for each foldback monitor you have on stage. If a musician is wearing in-ear monitors, then they will require a stereo aux. Why stereo? To get a realistic sound image based on what they are seeing and what they are used to. Even when musicians use a single foldback monitor, they will hear sounds coming from different directions depending on the stage layout. That realism will be lost when sending a mono mix to earphones. And it'll make it difficult for the performer to get comfortable with the one-dimensional sound. Six auxes should be considered a minimum requirement for a typical five-piece rock band. That's one additional aux for use with effects. Add more people with extra instruments and the aux count will need to rise. Each musician will need to hear a different combination of sounds in their monitors. TF3 can provide eight mono auxes for floor monitors and six stereo auxes for in-ear monitors. That's enough independent mixes for 14 band members. Here are some other points to consider. Does the venue have ideal acoustics? If not, you will do best using equipment with an output EQ. Does the venue require more than one pair of speakers and a subwoofer for the audience to hear? If so, you will need additional outputs, such as a matrix. If some speakers are far away from the stage, their sound will need to be delayed. Check if the mixer provides such a delay feature. Does the venue have a problem with feedback occurring on stage? You're going to need EQ on the aux output channels. The TF series of mixers have all those features available, while the MGP does not. You would need to invest in additional equipment and connecting cables to solve those issues. Do you know how to use sound sculpting tools like compressors, noise gates, reverb and delay effects? Will you have enough time to set them up? If so, check if your console has enough of them. MGP has 16 channels with compression and two effects units, while TF3 has 32 input channels with compression, as well as having it on 23 outputs. And it's equipped with eight effect units. That's great, so long as you have the time and skill to set them up well. Let's imagine that we already calculated 24 mic inputs is enough, and we don't need more than six aux buses. Then our best value options to consider are the Yamaha MGP32X and the TF3. How do we select the most suitable one? It's clear that one is analog and the other digital, but what's the difference? Well, we'll be demonstrating during the next bunch of videos how the TF Digital Mixer can help you make a better mix so long as you know and understand how to use all its features. If you're always short of time and don't have much experience, then you might get a better result from the analog mixer as it has a much simpler layout. Input at the top, move down the channel, go across to the groups, then up and out again. However, 
the digital mixer provides more tools for accurately shaping the sound, blending the instruments, and providing more detailed foldback mixes to the band. It has more facilities for tackling challenging acoustics and troublesome microphones. Another digital advantage is all its libraries and memories. You can store libraries of settings for every microphone and instrument, and you can store memories of complete band setups. If your job varies each day, a digital mixer will save you huge amounts of time. Furthermore, a digital console will allow the chance to use a digital stage box and snake, much lighter and more compact than the analog equivalent. Imagine an analog mixer with all the channels and features of the TF3. It would be like a king-size bed. By now, it should be clear about which type of mixing console will suit your needs. Aside from the obvious mics, cables and speakers, what other equipment should a sound engineer have in his or her bag? Headphones is the first item, and they should be a closed back type covering the ear for best isolation from all the sounds going on around. Yamaha makes some really tasty ones, the HPH MT8, 7 or 5. Get the best ones you can afford. Then a talkback mic is going to be useful. Plug it into the desk and it allows you to communicate with the band on stage without having to move away from the mixer. The MGP32X has a specific talkback input with level control and buttons to talk via the auxes. Various types of tape are necessary gaffer or duct tape to lay cables safely on the floor, label tape for mixer channels and the connectors. Even though TF3 has electronic channel labels, tape is still handy for marking up the rear connectors and its user-defined keys. The third type of tape is electrical tape, handy for keeping cables coiled neatly. Though you may prefer to use Velcro or plastic cable ties to avoid any sticky marks. Anyway, a neat cable is a long-lasting cable. Then, you will need a marker pen to write on the label tape. Also, you're going to need a pair of gloves to help you carry heavy boxes and coil the cables. Then, a torch, or a phone with a torch, to check cable connections in the dark. And batteries for equipment such as wireless mics and DI boxes. You know, you can't always rely on a musician to remember their own batteries, so make friends by being prepared. Then, a USB drive can be used to play back your favorite background music or system test music and for storing memories from a digital mixer. Always have some music and a player like a USB drive or smartphone with familiar music for testing a sound system. You may want different types of music depending on the type of event, but have some high energy, powerful music and some gentle music with beautiful acoustic instruments and clear vocals. And have the correct cable. Both MGP and TF can use a standard USB charging cable with iPhone, iPad and so on. Right, now we've got the mixing equipment sorted, in the next video, I'm going to give you some tips about microphone and speaker placement, and we're going to organize all the connections to the mixing console. See you then.